So you got your new R10 or R7 camera, and rather than ending up with footage looking like this, you wanna get the most out of your camera so that your footage looks more like this? Then stay tuned to see what the best lens for video is on these cameras. And just to be clear, there's no one perfect lens that's gonna meet all of your needs, but if I was gonna choose only one for making good films, I would go with this Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens. As I explain why I'm gonna compare it with this Canon 17 to 55 millimeter F 2.8 lens to show you why I think this is the best all around lens for filmmaking if I'm only choosing one. And I have Amazon and B&H links for both of these lenses in the description, so if you decide to purchase one, it won't cost you anything extra, but it will greatly help out the channel. So when it comes to lenses, there are three main things to consider when making your choice, and those are the focal length, the aperture, and the autofocus capabilities. Starting with the focal length, the lower the number, the wider the field of view, and the higher the number, the more narrow the field of view. I like to have a variety of lenses when making my film, so a zoom lens is the most convenient. 24, 35, and 50 millimeters are my most used focal lengths, and they're actually the only three I used when filming my last short film, Bedtime, that I'll have linked in the description so that you can check out how using those various focal lengths contributed to the overall look of the film. So let me know down in the comments what types of videos you plan on making because that could possibly change my suggestion for you. But with this Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens, you get pretty much all those focal lengths combined into a single lens because on a Canon APS-C camera, you have a 1.6 times crop on your lens. And basically this means that your 18 to 35 millimeter has an equivalent focal length of 29 to 56 millimeters. And if you don't know what I mean by equivalent focal length, I have a video here on camera crop factor linked below that'll explain it further for you. But the 29 millimeter is wide enough for arm length type shots if you're into vlogging. So we're here vlogging on the 18 millimeter, which equivalent is like a 28, 29 millimeter. And you can see I'm arm's length of the gorilla pod. It's working just fine. See the kids there. Of course, when you go to the enhanced stabilization mode, now I'm at arm's length and this is as wide as I get, so keep that in mind. I usually don't use that much image stabilization, so it's not a big deal. And just to show you, this is the normal stabilization mode, not the enhanced. Still plenty smooth, looking fine. So make your pick, but 18 is wide enough for me in this case. But if you did want to get a bit wider and a little extra reach, the 17 to 55 millimeter will give you an equivalent focal length of 27 to 88 millimeters. But for the extra reach, you're making a trade off for the maximum aperture of this lens. The 17 to 55 millimeter only lets you get down to an aperture of f 2.8, which is really good and will give you a nice shallow depth of field. But the 18 to 35 millimeter will give you a maximum aperture of f 1.8 that gives you an extra 1.3 three stops of light, as well as an even shallower depth of field. If you don't know what I mean by stops of light, I have another video that'll help you understand how exposure works linked in the description as well. An important thing to keep in mind is that both of these lenses give you a constant maximum aperture, which means you can maintain that wide aperture throughout the entire zoom range of the lens. Unlike cheaper kit lenses like the Canon 18 to 45 millimeter, which starts out at a maximum aperture of f 4.5 at 18 millimeters. And as you zoom into 45 millimeters, you have to go all the way up to f 6.5. 0.3 on the aperture, which is very limiting on your creativity. The lower the maximum aperture of the lens, the shallower you can make the depth of field, which gives you a lot more control over the style of your shots. Another reason why a shallower depth of field is important is because of the low light capabilities. When I'm shooting with the full frame camera, the larger sensor has larger pixels, giving it better low light performance so that I can get a clean image even when only getting down to f2.8. But when shooting at f1.8 on an APS-C camera like the R10, I still need to have the ISO at 800, which is my maximum for a smaller sensor in a low light setting to maintain as clean an image as possible. But when only being able to use f2.8, the ISO has to be pushed up to 2000 to get the same exposure, which introduces a lot more noise into the shot than you'll probably want to have. And if you're limited to f6.3 like that 18 to 45 millimeter kit lens, the ISO has to be pushed all the way up to 10,000, which introduces a lot more noise and less color accuracy that pretty much makes the video unusable. So having the option of getting all the way down to f1.8 is a definite must for me in choosing a zoom lens for filmmaking with an APS-C size sensor, because I still want to get the cleanest possible image in camera. And the last thing to make sure is that the lens has good autofocus capabilities, because starting out, chances are you're going to be filming things just by yourself or even of yourself. So 
good autofocus is a must. One of my favorite ways to test a lens's autofocus is to do a dolly zoom test because if the camera can stay locked onto someone's face while moving and zooming, then you know it's a good lens. So you can see here, when paired with the R7, the Canon 17 to 55 millimeter performed great during the test with staying locked onto the subject, even when I started moving the camera back and forth faster on the slider. However, on the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter, I noticed a little glitch at the beginning of each movement where it went slightly out of focus for a split second before locking back on and then working fine during the rest of the dolly zoom. However, something to keep in mind is that the lens's autofocus capability is only going to be as good as the camera's autofocus system. When using the R10, the autofocus wasn't quite as good on the Canon 17 to 55 millimeter with a little bit of focus hunting throughout the movement, but nothing too noticeable that's gonna make the shot unusable. And the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter seemed to perform the same as in the test with the R7 with that slight bit of glitch at the beginning of the movements. I also like to test out the touch autofocus and both of these lenses had similar performance with no noticeable hunting in my touch autofocus test for racking focus between multiple objects. And when testing the autofocus tracking, neither lens had any problems staying locked onto me when walking around or adjusting focus when moving quickly in and out of frame regardless of the camera that I used. The Canon and Sigma seem to be about equal on their focusing speed with locking onto me with those movements of me going in and out of frame. When it comes to image quality, prime lenses are going to be sharp sharper and more color accurate than zoom lenses in most cases, but they're also quite a bit more expensive and you have the inconvenience of having to carry around multiple lenses and changing them out all the time. The Sigma 24 and 35 millimeter f1.4 lenses will cost you $1,700, whereas this Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter is only $750. But keep in mind that both of these are EF mount lenses and the Canon R7 and R10 are both RF mount cameras. So you'll need an adapter to be able to use either of these lenses with those cameras. Unfortunately, there's no lower price zoom lens options for RF mount cameras yet. However, there are some pretty cool adapters you can get that have a control ring attached that works really well with programming different controls to it, and some that even have changeable ND filters so that you won't need to buy a filter for each lens that you get. And the last thing to point out is that both of these are EFS lenses, meaning they're designed for use on an APS-C camera. So if you decide to upgrade to a full frame camera in the future, these lenses will be useless for you. So if you're wanting to invest in a lens that you'll be able to use in the future on an upgrade full frame type of camera, the Canon 15 to 35 millimeter F 2.8 RF mount lens would be a good choice. However, you'll be spending $2,000 for that and you'll lose the benefit of that F 1.8 aperture. But if you have any questions about either of these lenses I mentioned today or any other lenses for that matter, post them down in the comments and I'll try to clarify what I can and help you out there. And I also have a lot of playlists on the channel teaching creative techniques that'll help you to get the most out of your new lens and help improve your videos even more. But if this video was helpful, please help me by hitting that like button, subscribe if you're new. I also have a private Facebook group linked below where I can help you on your filmmaking journey. And with all of that, I'll see you soon.